Bob Aldiston. It's very good to meet you, sir. You've responded to some of my letters in the very beginning of your office. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming out. Now, who, who are y'all with? This is indivisible. It's a whole bunch of different It's a lot of parents in the South Carolina. I was in Crossville, Tennessee today, and there were a number of indivisible people at uh, the luncheon I was at. And they asked a lot of great questions. We have so many concerns. You know, we've got a great uh, Senate Intel Committee with Mark Warner, who's a Democrat, a great friend of mine, and, and, and uh, Richard Burr. I think that is the very best place for this investigation because they have instant access to classified well, documents. Independent, independent, yeah. independent, yeah. independent, yeah. independent yeah. prosecutors. Yeah. That's yeah. not the way it's going to be done. Yeah. Well. Well, here's, here's what I've said. It's not going to be done by a Republican concern. Yeah. It can't. It's got to be an independent yeah. prosecutor. Well, it you know it as well as I yeah. yeah. so, so we have a, a you know, Mark Warner, who's a Democrat and a good friend, who yeah, he's a good, he's a good I check with all... each week. They've been slowed with, down. Well, they're, they're actually not being slowed down. And, yes, and I check with him each week to ensure that it all is going as it should. And I've said publicly, and I'll say to you, if at any point I feel like that process is not working in the way that it should, I'll, I'll look for another avenue to, uh, or support another avenue. But I really do think it is the right place for it to occur, and I, I, uh, I think they're doing the job in the way that they're supposed to. The House can piece Can I ask you a working. question, Senator? The sure. FBI has been investigating since last July. Right. So that's the an Russian involvement. Yeah. Really God, how long does it take? Yeah. Really. Of course, look how many. It months. took them 24 yeah. years to investigate the Toyota on the soccer. Yeah. 24 years. Yeah. I mean, well, how let me just say. Yeah. So let me let me just mention. So we had after the 9/11. Did you ask Jim Comey to kind of pick yes, up the pace? Is there somebody here that asked questions? <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, uh, well, how do you home? feel about the tax transparency? Is there any chance of of getting a tax transparency requiring tax disclosure. Yeah, I, you know, look, there, there isn't one on running no. for president, as you know, and I think to do that retrospectively is, Why? Oh, well, is not all not cleared up. All of it can be cleared not. up. And subpoena. All he has to do is, yeah. is show it. You know, one it's of the things simple to wipe this clean one of the things that happened in my first meeting this week is there were a group of indivisible folks there and, and it was great. It was in uh, Arlington, Tennessee. But in the beginning, and we had a, I was there like an hour and a half. I, I tried to answer questions, but people kept interrupting. And all I would say to you is, look, I meet with people of all walks of life nonstop. I'm very accessible. I ride my bike around the community. I, I mean, I'm not somebody that hides behind folks. I would just here? give you small piece of input from me and that is elected officials are more than glad to answer questions but it's best if you don't interrupt and hiss and all those kind of things yeah. lies. we've been waiting for a town hall well, like i just mentioned so, yeah, so. Hall where we really yeah. can address it right now we recognize you're going to be gone in a few minutes and people are going to get questions in a town hall would allow us to have all these questions yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a really dumb question? Sure. None Are you more, real? So. This is really dumb. Yeah. Okay. Are you like seriously, sincerely like comfortable with the administration in the White House? So look, I think the administration, as I'm going to say in here right now, um, I had concerns about foreign policy. I'm chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, and I don't have, I didn't, I don't have, and didn't have the same view of Russia as the administration did coming in, but I've, I have seen them evolve in a positive way. I'm just being honest. I've seen them evolve to a much better place on Russia. Smoking I've mirrors. seen them, see, but I mean, this is what I'm saying. This is not the way people generally right, talk with each other. Okay. Yeah, we need to have a back and forth about healthcare, which there's no way you can do Well, but see, you won't, you won't let me even answer. And I think, I think, I think the reason that people resist the kinds of meetings that you're talking about. In every meeting I've had this week, I think indivisible people have been there. All right. But I think that, I think the point is, is that a lot of these meetings have been set up in a manner that you don't really allow people to answer questions. There are interruptions, there's, it's rude. I'm not interrupting you, I'm waiting, but 
But back to this, I've had concerns about the foreign policy component, and I really feel like they are evolving into a very good place. I had concerns about uh, their view of things like Syria. I had concerns about their view of Russia. I had concerns about uh, some of the things that have been said about China. I actually th see them moving to a what, place what that think? I'm very, very comfortable with, and I think they have a national security team that is uh, Cracker Jack. I mean, they're very good. General Mattis is outstanding. Rex Tillerson has turned out to be incredible. I'm really proud of some of the things that he's doing. General uh, McMaster, who's head of the National Security Co Council, um, he's outstanding. So they have some good people, and in my opinion, they are really getting to a place that I love on foreign policy. Thank you for answering that. How come they didn't policy? know where the ships were at the warship? <laughs> they said they was going towards North Korea when they was 3,500 miles well, that, the other way. That certainly was a, a mistake. Two but weeks I later, you, they're still out there. I assure there. you, Mattis knew where they were. But, oh, he didn't either. Excuse me, sir. He went Senator along Porter, with uh, what, what do you mean? You're talking about some of your, I know you're on a time schedule. You were talking about some of your concerns with some town halls, and I'm from I'm a student at Maryville College, yeah. and I was working with President Bogart on, on setting that up, and we had made concessions where it would be moderated, yeah. and it would only be students yeah. that would be asking questions and and stuff. So I'm I'm curious why that town hall never happened. I have we, no idea. We were told that yeah. you didn't have time in your schedule, which is, yeah, I'm I'm just I'm curious yeah. about that. Yeah. You're concerned about. Yeah, I know you want to talk with constituents, and, and I appreciate you coming out here and talking with I us. Too. But yeah. if if you want that kind of environment, we offer that kind of environment. And well, and I'm I'm so I have no idea about uh, a town hall that was set up or not set up. I don't know any details about it. But I am here right now, and I am asked, answering so, questions, sure. and I'm going to be doing the same thing. To, I'm going to be please. doing the same thing tomorrow morning at 7:30, and I'm going to be where, where, at, where? in Oak Ridge. Yes, ma'am. Um, first, I'd like to say. I do appreciate some of the work that you do, especially on addressing Modern the human slavery. trafficking yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have some questions for you about the bill that you have introduced to allow people that have zero options in their state marketplace. Sure. Okay. Um, so I would just like to preface that with Tennessee's marketplace is where it is because the state did not Im implement the law as written. But I read your your press release and I've looked at the plans that are available right um, and while it's nice that you can apply that you're trying to get us to be able to apply our tax credit to non marketplace plans the plans are subpar yes. if you are a single woman you cannot buy maternity coverage there's no insurer no private insurer in Tennessee that will ensure that I could find in hours of digging through all their details online, the Tennessee yeah. Farm Bureau and yeah. the few that still yeah. sell plants in Tennessee, yeah. that will sell maternity coverage to a single woman. Yeah. Um, they have a pre-existing condition exclusionary period. The costs are astronomical. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Yeah. It's great to apply the tax credit, but it's not great if you're getting garbage for your money. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, well, look, you know, I'm not, I never said that that was the solution mm -hmm. to the problem. What I said was is that we have a group of people in Knoxville, Tennessee in particular that, that don't have a plan that they can apply their credit to, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact. And so as a stopgap, I'm not saying this is a solution, but as a stopgap, We'd like for people who are getting a tax credit to be able, if they can't find a plan on the exchange, to try to find one off the exchange. Right. And and that's all. In the interim, I mean, that's, that's a, just an interim deal. The problem we got to solve the problem. Yes. And, can and I, so uh, so so that. But don't think sorry. that I think that's yeah. the solution no, to the problem. I, I do have a follow up though. Um, part of why the marketplace is in the situation it is is because instead of repealing the law. Um, parts of appropriations have been kept away. So risk corridor appropriation went away and the cost sharing benefit um, appropriations went away from insurance companies. And many companies have stated that that was their reason for yeah. leaving the marketplaces they did. Because in states that didn't expand Medicaid, the pool that's on the marketplace is often sicker yes. because right. people yes. who would have been right. yes. on Medicaid Absolutely. are not. That's right. And then because Congress voted to deny appropriations to continue the risk corridor payments back to companies who could prove that they ran at a loss. 
and um, deny the payments back to pay the companies back for the cost sharing that they paid to people on silver plans yeah. that is causing the losses. Now, as so, I, first of all, thank you for being so knowledgeable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as I understand it, the administration is looking at continuing the, the cost sharing component. Is that not correct? I, I, no. I think well, I'm talking about um, if you fall within a certain level, in addition to your tax credits, the insurance companies, as the law is written, have to assist you with lowering your max out of pocket for the year so you get, you would pay a lower yeah, and, copay. And, and that's and, the piece though, aren't they considering extending that right now? To my knowledge, it's not being funded right now. It's not yeah, being paid. I, I, think, I, think, I think the administration is actually looking at making some changes in a couple of the areas you're mentioning. Mm -hmm to keep the program going until it can be reformed. I could be wrong, but my understanding is I've been on recess for a week and a half. I was in mm -hmm. Uganda, and then I've been traveling across the state. But I think that they are looking at ways of trying to mitigate some of the problems right. you're talking about. But I, I, thank you again for knowing so much about yeah. it. Also well, so we're yeah. Yes, okay. I mean, one reason yeah. I know so much about it is my son was born with a pre-existing condition, yeah. and I'm terrified yeah. that we won't be able to get insurance for yeah. yeah. I can understand. What, what do you so, plan to know about pre-existing yeah. conditions? I spend hours at night. Yeah, anything that service. happens is going to include coverage for pre-existing conditions. Right on. But yeah. access yeah. isn't yeah. affordability. Right. And that's yeah. the big problem. Okay. Well, let me tell you this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I agree with that. And I thought that one of the flaws with the initial House bill was that, you know, whereas right now in Knoxville, um, people are getting a subsidy but they don't have a plan that they can buy, so that's like having a bus ticket and no bus. Right. Um, that my friend Alexander uses as a, uh, the, the problem with the way things are moving on the house, you're gonna end up with a, uh, with a bus, but no bus ticket because right. you couldn't afford it. So exactly. we've got to resolve that in our career. Exactly, and, okay. And okay. So you know, in other yeah, states, other states had that hear. issue, and they were able to work with yeah. providers. There, no legislation was needed. Arizona had that issue. Alabama had that issue. And they were able to work with providers and bring them in without any new legislation. So I would hope 